You don't need me to tell you the Italians are great at building characterful cars. They've been making them for decades. Take the latest Fiat 500e. It's not just charismatic for an Italian car, but it's the most charming EV on sale right now. Full stop. Fiat wants to re-establish itself as the master of smaller cars, and to do so, it's returning to the B-segment hatchback market. The last time Fiat was here was in 2018 with the Punto. But Fiat is back with not one, but two new models. There's a brand new Fiat Panda coming next year, but in the meantime, there's this, the all new Fiat 600E. It's the new bigger brother to the 500E, and it's a family hatchback but with a slightly rugged crossover look. But beneath the 500 design cues, the 600E shares a lot with its sister car, the Jeep Avenger. When I say share, I mean it basically nicks the Jeep's platform, its 154 brake horsepower electric motor and its 54 kilowatt hour battery pack, which also happens to be the same hardware as the Peugeot E2008 as well. There's an easy reason for all of this. They're all built by Stellantis, so there's a lot of family love going on here. Even the dashboard is taken pretty much lock, stock and barrel from the Jeep Avenger. But there are some Fiat retro touches, like on this La Prima version, we've got this ivory coloured panel on the dashboard. And the seats, they're embossed with the Fiat logo. Probably to remind you what car you're driving, if you've forgotten. Aside from these features though, and the strange cover that looks like an iPad cover that hides the central cubby, there isn't quite the same delight that you get in the 500e. And while everything feels robust, there are too many scratchy plastics on the dash and on the doors for my liking. The infotainment system works well though, there's decent space in the back, boot room stands at 360 litres, but only La Prima models get a movable boot floor. Prices start at a reasonable 32995 for the entry-level red model and rise to 36995 for the La Prima, which means the 600E undercuts the Avenger and the E2008, but not the MG4. If you want a charging cable though, Fiat will relieve you of £400, which seems a bit stingy to me. What's it like to drive then? Well, if you're expecting this to be a typical electric car and absolutely fly towards the horizon when you put your foot on the throttle, then you're gonna be disappointed because this is not a quick car. Not to 62 miles an hour takes nine seconds. And if you put this car in eco mode, which you probably will if you wanna eke out that claimed 250 mile range, it feels as though you're not going anywhere at all. But I'm probably being a little bit too harsh because this is a family SUV after all, or family crossover hatchback. And do you really want lightning fast reactions in your family car? Probably not. The acceleration is probably more than good enough. Now I do like the ride. It is particularly good in this 600E and it's probably the best ride aside from the EC4 of all of these Stellantis electric crossover SUVs. Now we're driving this car in the home of Fiat, Turin, and the roads are as crumbly as you'll find in Britain. And this car has just sailed over them. You do get the sense that when you hit a pothole, it sort of glides over, you hear the wheel go in the pothole, but you don't necessarily feel it. And that really does bode well for the car in the UK. The steering is very light. It's more than accurate enough, but it does feel a little bit light. Although I would say, happily, it does weight up when you pick your speed up. This is a very likeable car, and one that I think would be very easy to live with. 
I also think it'll be a strong seller here in Britain because we love Italian chic. The 600E is also the best example of a larger Fiat 500 I've seen, but there's still the feeling that the 600E's character is just a little skin deep. The 500E is the real deal. I suppose what I'm trying to say is that the 600E doesn't woo you like the 500E does. But what the 600E lacks in charisma, it makes up in usability. This is a well-priced and spacious family SUV crossover EV hatchback, call it what you will. This is a great all-rounder. It just doesn't make you want to own it unconditionally.